For several decades, all kinds of rockets, from the biggest to the smallest, have been flying into space. People have sent stations and satellites into orbit, and even occasionally our research probes visit distant planets. But don't you think that space exploration is too slow? If we even take the moon, the last time man stepped on its surface was in 1972. Insanely slow. And then Elon Musk comes on the scene and says that by 2050 there will be a huge colony of people on Mars. So how will this be realized? All thanks to the brand new and unique SpaceX rocket. Learn more about it and how it will change the course of history in this video. Let's talk about Starship and first of all go back to the beginning. SpaceX announced the first truly heavy rocket back in 2010. But since then, plans have changed many times. There was the Mars Colonial Transporter and Interplanetary Transport System. And then there was the BFR, or Big Falcon Rocket. All these rockets were united by a couple of fundamental ideas. To have full reusability, and in the future to take a man to Mars. But really the first serious plans were announced only in 2018, when the already famous Starship was presented. The plans were, to put it mildly, grandiose. A giant rocket with a height of about 120 meters and a diameter of 9 meters with a total mass of 5,000 tons and a calculated thrust of 75,000 kilonewtons. These figures seemed absolutely unrealistic at that time. And even now, seeing the rocket already standing on the launching table and fully ready for flight, it still reminds of something from sci-fi movies. But let's move on to the rocket itself. It consists of two stages, the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship. Super Heavy has a height of about 70 meters and is accelerated by 33 Raptor engines. To reduce mass, the outer circle of engines has no redirection capability, but the center engines can change the thrust vector. This, and the presence of four huge lattice rudders on top, will allow the booster to return back to the launch pad. SpaceX has already done a static fire test to check loads and vibrations. The Super Heavy booster itself was designed so that after takeoff and separation from the Starship, it would turn around and fly in the opposite direction, heading for the launch point. By this time, everything on the launch pad has been prepared. It's time to move on to Starship. That is, the second stage. Let's now look at the parameters of the spacecraft itself. It is about 50 meters high and the same diameter as the Super Heavy. It has six engines, including three central engines for landing and three Raptor vacuum engines located on the edges of the ship. Starship will land vertically, about the same as Falcon 9, and re-entry will be horizontal, similar to how the shuttle landed. For this purpose, half of the ship is covered with special thermal protection tiles that should withstand the heat from friction. But what is planned for the payload? Starship can launch up to 150 tons of cargo into low Earth orbit in a reusable version, and up to 250 tons in a disposable one, though hardly anyone will do so. Well, and here is something more interesting passenger variant here. It is planned that the volume of hermetic rooms will be equal to about 1,000 cubic meters. Enough space for living up to 100 people, kitchen common space, laboratory, and much more. In a new chapter in astronautics, we will be able to put much more cargo into orbit. Satellites will be bigger and cost less. We will be able to build much more advanced space stations. Well, the most unique ability of the Starship at the moment is the potential ability to refuel in orbit in addition to the fact that it increases the possible payload capacity to enter orbit. The main thing is that this opens the way to the moon and then to Mars. And if everything goes according to plan, space travel will become commonplace for us very soon. So we've learned about Starship, but what advantages does it have over other rockets? We won't take Rocket Lab's electron-like rockets as an example as they are not comparable to Starship. So let's take NASA's newest SLS for comparison. The cost of the rocket is, $2.2 billion for the SLS manufacturing itself, $568 million for ground systems, $1 billion for the Orion spacecraft, and $300 million to the European Space Agency for the Orion service module. What's striking about these costs is that they don't include the tens of billions of dollars NASA has already spent on developing the Orion spacecraft since 2005 and the Space Launch System rocket since 2011. The total cost of $4.1 billion per mission is awfully expensive, don't you think? Whereas a single Starship launch is estimated to cost $20 million. Also, in terms of payloads, Elon Musk's rocket leads the way. SLS can put 95 tons into orbit, and Starship, as we said earlier, all 150 tons. Which is an absolute record. Interesting fact, the weight of the ISS is 420 tons, and in order for SLS could deliver such a mass into orbit, we'll need... 
five launches and more than $20 billion. In the case of Starship, the numbers would be different. Three launches and attention, only $60 million. Another major advantage, which we mentioned earlier, is reusability. While SLS simply ejects 90% of its size to burn up in the atmosphere when it goes into space, Starship appears to us as a fully completed reusable system, which reduces its cost. There are still a limitless number of advantages of Starship, but let's move on to how they want to use it. Created as the basis of a transportation system for Martian colonies, today Starship has many potential applications. First, a cargo ship for delivering large cargoes into space. These could be large shipments of satellite telescopes larger than James Webb, or, for example, a full-size drill to explore Martian soil instead of the tiny Perseverance rover drill. And the passenger version could be adapted to fly to the Moon, Mars, and other destinations. More details about how passengers will live in Starship we talked about earlier. But it is also expected that the life support system of the older one will be closed. That is, all resources in it will be constantly recycled. And the lunar version of Starship to reduce mass will not have wings and heat shielding, and will use small engines for landing because of the risk of raising dust and the formation of craters when landing on the Raptor engines. The six engines will be located at the top of the Starship's hull. Starship has many applications. For example, space tourism, one billionaire Jared Isaacman has already bought a ticket on one of their first manned flights on Starship. The U.S. military has its own plans for the Starship. In January, they gave SpaceX $102 million to study and use the spacecraft as a cargo ship that can deliver military and humanitarian supplies to various parts of the world in minutes. But the most enticing use for Starship is this access to the outer planets, which have historically been difficult to send missions to. In recent years, the satellites of Saturn and Jupiter have overtaken Mars as the most promising places to look for alien life. Scientists are already developing a plan to use the rocket to explore Neptune, which has only been visited once before in 89, when the U.S. probe Voyager 2 flew past as it went beyond the solar system. We talked more about the role Starship could play in colonizing Mars in the video at the link. As of today, the Starship Super Heavy rocket has undergone a test refueling, as well as a flight in full assembly at Starbase in Texas. The Starship program is unique and is one of the most ambitious in space history. Elon Musk's company development philosophy is that if things are going well, then you're not innovating enough, but do you believe in the success of the Starship program? Write in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and like this video.